Nerd Reactor, roll out. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Uh, good, good. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, over the weekend, uh, or past weekend, the lead at number one. Uh, so, just want to hear your thoughts on just the uh, reaction from fans. Oh, no, it's been great. I mean, people were really responding to the movie and word of mouth getting out. It's, it's always hard to break a new franchise, but it's been a, a fantastic reaction by, by the by the audience. Yeah. And uh, the ending with um, – it ended a cliffhanger. And were you concerned, like, whether you should have a cliffhanger ending or try to, like, wrap it up? For the uh, just that arc. Well, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't wrap up a story like that. <laughs> it goes on for 30, 30, 30 books. But yeah, you always should have you know an ending that feels right for the character. I thought the, the where we, Jim had ended in the script was really smart way to go. It, it, it starts with her, you know, not knowing who she is, thinking she's insignificant, no memory, and by the end, knowing exactly who she is and what she has to do. So it's a it's a good arc for for the character. To end there, where where it feels like you can imagine a, a sequel, but mm-hmm. if there isn't one, you can you know it doesn't have to have one. You know, by, I've had other movies like that before. Like El Mariachi, he didn't get the guitar case with weapons till the very last scene in the movie. And then yeah. Spy Kids, they didn't actually become spies till the very last scene in the movie. So yeah, that's yeah. really good, like, origin, origin stories, you know. So it's, it's more of an origin story, like who she is. How does she become the battle angel? And yeah. And call her that, you know, in the last scene. Um, so I think that's, that's a, that was a cool, the bright place to end it. Did you want to try to create, like, extra scenes or creative freedom in terms of wanting to add your own thing in, in terms of trying to balance things between the script from James Cameron and uh, just the way you're directing it? I mean, it's going to have – my touch on it no matter what because then you're directing it and when you direct you make every decision between you know what color something is to what actor you pick and you know how the play is seen but um, I really loved the original manga and I loved Jim's script so I, I didn't I wasn't like trying to impose my style on it I kind of actually knew that I shouldn't put my style on it because it, it needed to feel more grounded and real for you to believe the fantasy there's so much fantasy in it where my other stuff tends to be pretty whimsical or stylized. I knew I didn't want to go the, the Sin City route and, and make it look like a manga come to life, you know, kind of stylization, because it would just be too unbelievable. I like yeah. the tone of the of the script, which read more like a Jim Cameron story, which was his fantasy and sci-fi is always grounded a lot more in reality so that you believe it. So I really wanted to go that route. And, but that still ends up having some touches of mine but people you know mistake the touches though <laughs> they say like <laughs> well, we can tell the bar fight you probably came up with no no the bar fight's in the original manga and it's in Jim's script so but it ends up yeah. being the feel of, of my stuff because you know I did the music for that scene and I kind of have a certain shooting and cutting style I, I, I try not to try not to impose it too much on this but you kind of can't help it yeah and I know you like to you know do the music for your movies but for this one you have I guess you got the composer Junkie XL. Uh, what was it like working yeah, with him? Yeah, he's great. Oh, I heard the score to Fury Road, and I just thought he was awesome. I mean, it had, like, such propulsion and drive, but then also had really heartfelt moments, and that's what this felt like it needed. And I've worked with composers before, and, you know, a lot of times I'll just compose my own score when I'm out of money and I can't afford it. <laughs> but, but when you have the budget to be able to hire – really great collaborators. I, I love learning from the masters and, and he's really masterful at, at all of that. It was really fun to work with him. And you speak yeah. their language because you've done it before. So it's easier to communicate with all the different heads of the departments that you usually run yourself. Uh, for, uh, you, you know, you know him for your cooking. So I was wondering if you did anything oh, for uh, Alita. The chocolate, the sheets in there, I made that chocolate. I'm a, I made the bar. I made the filling. I made the whole, the whole thing. Cause I, I, I'm a chocolatier. <laughs> Nice. So that's in the movie. But then, yeah, I, I usually have everyone over to my house and I cook for everybody, and it's part of the part of the fun of the, of the movie project. You thinking about having the chocolate be mass produced? I don't know mass produced, but I'm going to do a cooking school probably for the for the Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that James Cameron uh, he had inspiration with Dark Angel. Uh, or, you know, with uh, Alita, Alita inspired Dark Angel. So I was wondering if uh, that had anything to do with uh, this film, or is it strictly uh, working on the uh, source material, the manga? 
Oh yeah, no, I actually never even heard if he if he based Dark Angel on this at all. But um, so I actually couldn't even confirm that. I've never heard that. But um, uh, yeah, I mean his script. I read his script first actually because when I when it was announced that he was going to do this project back in early 2000, I was um, it showed a picture of Alita and it showed a picture of Jim and said he that was his next movie. So I stayed away from the manga on purpose because I, I I figured the movie would be out in a few years. I, I didn't want the story spoiled. Yeah. And um, years and just a few years ago when I read his <laughs> script finally, I, I read his script first and loved the story. It was it surprised me how emotional it was and how the themes were bigger than the genre it was in. That I then went back and read all the mangas and saw where he got you know the main beats from, but also where he deviated and made it richer and 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 uh more more jim cameron stuff like motorball they don't even play motorball they're just trying to kill her you know it's just yeah 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 I mean, <laughs> sequences like that that's that's a complete fabrication of jim's so um i i was a, a big fan of both both versions uh for let's say if the sequel does happen uh would you uh come back for it and would you have any ideas on what it would include oh yeah i would love to come back and do another one it was so fun working with jim's great I thought Rose is incredible, and the effects are just amazing. I mean, to think they'd even be better by then, by a sequel, because they just keep evolving. Those guys, Weta, is just at the top of their game. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Jim, you know, just as a writing process, even if there isn't a sequel, I got to see how he crafts his movies and stories. He writes, uh, he outlines out several pictures just so that you know what to include in the first one and what not to include, what's not necessary. So there's so many mangas and, and so many places we could go that uh, it'd be pretty pretty easy to come up with a, a second step. Based on the uh, the Alita manga, is there like a favorite arc in the manga? No, I mean it, they all, they don't even really are consistent even with themselves. They kind of go all over the place. So mm -hmm. it, it's exciting to, that there's a lot of leeway. You know, there's a lot of really cool ideas and sequences and and characters and visuals and uh it's pretty rich i mean it's, there's a lot more to work with there than even i had in the sin city those are always like shorter stories so there's a lot to work with uh for me uh, alita's eyes i love them because it conveyed emotions and uh, yeah. for you did you have any hesitations on whether you should keep the uh the, the big eyes no, I mean, he, I saw his early paintings that he was going to do. He was going to do this back in 2005. Imagine there wasn't even the technology back then. And uh, when I saw the first, you know, visuals that he had put together just with, you know, paintings, um, that first image of her with the porcelain arms and the large eyes, I was just like, that, that was something you've never seen before. And Jim always does something you've never seen before in his movies. And I realized that this is what, that's what it was going to be. So we just, didn't even question it. That was definitely how we were going to be doing it. And um, it was true to the manga, but also that exact thing. Even from the paintings, you could tell she would convey a lot more emotion. She's a cyborg, so it makes sense that she could have that those features. But, um, but yeah, I think that the benefit is the eyes are the window to the soul, and you see a lot more soulfulness coming through. And the whole hat trick has to be that the most humanity is coming from the characters. It's not even really human. 